Please remember that the complete information for the class that you are about to view is at elithecomputerguy.com. Not only do we have our videos there, but we have part lists, diagrams, pictures, and even complete code examples. So if you are watching this video and you want more information, please go to elithecomputerguy.com. Welcome back. As you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy, and in today's class, I'm going to show you how to specify specific uh, elements that will be modified by your classes in CSS. So in CSS, you can create classes. With these classes, you can say how text in your HTML document should be modified. So different colors, different background colors, different font types, the whole nine yards. Well, imagine if you're creating an HTML document and you want all of your text to look similar, but you also want to be able to modify the tags individually. So in the example that I'm going to show you today, we're going to create a class called pretty text. So I'm going to create a class period pretty text and all the text uh, that is within the class pretty text is going to be orange and it's going to be of a specific font. So I've decided I don't want to use the default font uh, for all of the text with the class uh, pretty text. I want it to be a specific font. But then underneath of that, I also want to do things such as modify the H1 tag, modify the P tag, so on and so forth. And so one of the things that I can do is so all the text that uses the pretty text class will all be orange and all will be the same font. But then I can go in and I can say P period pretty text. So P period, whatever my class name is. And I want this to be modified additionally by doing these additional things. H1 period, whatever the class name is, I want the H1 tag to be uh, modified with these additional things. So basically this is a way that you can say anything with this class will be orange, it will have this font type, it will have you know certain common characteristics. And then underneath of that, I wanna modify the H1 tags within this class this way. I wanna modify the P tags within this class this way. I wanna modify the H3 tags within this class this way, so on and so forth. So that way you can have text that is all similar but then the tags can be used to then differentiate uh, between the different types of text in the ways that you define so that's what I'm going to be showing you how to do today so let's go over to the computer so I can show you how this works so here we are at my demonstration machine. Again, I am using a MacBook, so I used a text edit to write this. I like using a basic ASCII te uh, text editor in order to write this type of simple code. If you're in the Windows world, you can use Notepad. Again, the Mac world, you can use text edit. If you're in the Linux world, you can use gedit, nano, vim, whatever you like. Uh, so I created two files today. Uh, the first one is the uh, class tag.html. So this is what we will actually double click on and open. Um, and this will basically just show us our results. This is what will open in the web browser. And this is going to reference the CSS style sheet called class tag style.css. So these are the two uh, documents that we'll be using today. Uh, the HTML document is pretty simple. So we'll just jump into the CSS and then go back to the HTML document so you can understand what's going on. Uh, so this is the style sheet. And you can see I don't really have much here. Um, I've only defined four classes. So the first thing that I've done is I've created a class for pretty text. So period pretty text. This this creates basically a default. So anything that has the class of pretty text will share these characteristics. So I've simply said anything with pretty text class will be the color of orange, and I've modified the font family to Arial. So basically, anytime I use the class pretty text within my HTML document, it will be orange and it will be Arial. That is the default standard. Then past that, what we've done is I've gone down here and I've modified the tags for H1, H2, and P. So in addition to what I defined here for the pretty text class, if it's in H1, so we do H1 period pretty text, I also want also, so again, this additive, I also want the background color to be gray. So the H1 will be orange, aerial, and now it will have the background color of, of gray. Then I've done for H2, for pretty text, it'll be orange, aerial, and I want the font style to be italic, right? And then for P, pretty text, uh, it'll be orange, aerial, and the text decoration, I'm going to have it underlined. So basically with all of these now, right, I'm creating a family uh, basically for my font within my HTML document to say everything will share these default values. So it'll all look the same. And then depending on what tag I'm using, here are some additional changes where I want the modifications. 
right? If we go over and we take a look at the HTML document, it's really simple. Again, you open the HTML, you open the head. We're going to link to the style sheet here. Again, this is where you put the name of the style sheet or the location of the style sheet. So since this style sheet is in the same folder, the same directory as the HTML document, I can simply put the name of it there. Then we're going to go down. We're going to close the head. We're going to open the body. And so here what I've done is I've simply put H1 with a class of pretty text, right? So this is H1 basically period pretty text. So we're going to get everything from pretty text plus we're going to get whatever we have here for h1 dot pretty text and basically just saying this is an h1 the same thing here h2 of pretty text so basically think of that as h2 period pretty text i go here we get all of this plus it's going to be italicized we go down to p again class of pretty text so it's p period pretty text which means it's going to be orange arial and it's going to be underlined Finally, a couple of things that I did under here, just so you can see like the differentiations, is I've done H3. So what you'll notice here is I have not done any additional definitions for the H3 tag. So basically what's going to happen here is H3 with a class of pretty text, all that's going to happen is it's going to simply get these attributes. It's going to get these attributes plus whatever the default is for the web browser itself. And then just to show you what all of the CSS is done here. Um, then I'm just using a basic H3 tag to show you what the default for an H3 tag should look like. So with that, let's go over, take a look at the class tag.html. I can now simply double click on this. And so this is what we see. So basically we have, this is an H1, right? So we have, uh, this is the Arial font. It is orange, but I also have a background color of gray right? Then this is H2. This is an H2. Again, Arial, orange, but now this is italicized. The P, Arial, orange, but it's underlined as I had for in the additional with the CSS. Then for the H3 here, again, since I didn't have any additional uh, definitions for the H3, there's no additional uh, definitions for the H3. So what you can see is this is simply Arial and orange. Otherwise, it's default for whatever the web browser decides. And then we can take a look at H3 here. And this is what the standard default H H3 formatting looks like. And so this gives you an idea of what this CSS modifies. And so this can be very useful again when you're creating like families of fonts, families for your text within your HTML document. This is a way you can go. And again, at the highest level, you can say, okay, I want everything to be this color. I want everything to be this font. I want everything to be X, Y, or Z. And then you can go down to each individual tag and then give a, a few additional things of how you want it to be again the important thing to understand is this will be added on to whatever you have here and whatever the default is for the web browser so again you'll notice like with this so this is h3 without any additional formatting so you'll notice it's Arial. you'll notice it's orange but it's the same basic size as the normal h3 text generally would be it's not underlined there's nothing additional so it's all the default stuff plus it being orange and Arial. So this is something that you can play with and it'll make it a lot easier for you when you're trying to create fonts and make, make your entire HTML document look like it goes together. So there you go. Now you know how to spe specify how specific tags should be dealt with within a class. So you create the overall class, for that class, anything that you define with that class will have those basic modifications, those basic attributes. Then you can go down H1, H2, H3, all the way to H6, to P, to all kinds of different tags you can put in there. And basically you can put those additional attributes there. What this does is it makes it very easy for you, again, to make your HTML uh, document look, look coherent, look cohesive. So when people look at it, again, everything is basically the same color, everything is the same font type everything that looks like it goes together and then with the h1 tags and the different tags then you can do the little modifications with those tags so that they can stand out for things such as you know headers and titles and menu bars and that type of thing uh, so this is just a very simple trick to make your html documents look a lot better and is an easy way to do it versus trying to do something such as create individual classes 
for all of your different tags, right? That would, that would be a way that, that you could accomplish what I showed you today, but it would be more difficult to do. Again, that's a big thing in the CSS and the coding world in general, is there's a thousand ways to accomplish, you know, to solve any problem. Uh, what you have to do is you have to figure out the most efficient way to do it, and that's where it can be difficult. So, as always, I enjoy doing this class and look forward to seeing you at the next one. If you like the content that I create, please think about going to elinethecomputerguy.com and becoming a member or donating. Please understand that all the educational videos are in front of the paywall. That includes the videos, that includes the notes, the diagrams, and the code example. All of that is freely available and in front of the paywall. But if you want to watch opinion videos or if you want to be able to comment, you do need to become a member. Membership is $5 a month or $60 a year and gives you access to those opinion videos and the ability uh, to comment. If you don't want to become a member, you just want to give a one-time uh, donation, there is also a donate button where you can do that. Please understand, in order to provide the education that I am, it does cost money. Servers cost money, equipment costs money, travel costs money. All of these things cost a reasonable amount of money. And the fact of the matter is, is YouTube's advertising program no longer supports creators the way that it used to. So if you want to these classes to continue to stick around and you find them to be valuable, please think about either becoming a monthly member or donating a few dollars for this project.